As is no hour of the day, the child steps into a classroom with a smile on their face. Like they're happy. I have not seen that happen for the longest time. They just dread being in a classroom. No matter how good or bad the teacher is. People might say, hey, you must be a bad teacher, they don't like you. I'm not even talking about myself. I'm, I've asked kids about any class they enjoy. Uh, oh, I find this subject easier. That's what they'll say. Then nobody is owning up to enjoying classroom. So I understand, and they, I understand because the exam-based stuff can't be easy, can't be made fun. It can be, but because it's exams, you are a practice. All I'm saying is, I'm sure kids will also agree. If it's not fun, can we make it at least shorter? And I'm not saying it this compromise anything. We we we've done this experiment for two years. Kids have sat for classes, uh, digital lectures, videos. Sat for exams like this, private practice, they weren't A stars. It works, it works equally well. And if people say it doesn't work, well, then it, it doesn't work equally as much as the other thing doesn't work. We just like to believe that it works better because we feel that we were important because we were there. Or we fear the change. We fear, we right now, the teacher is at the center of all. Right now, if the teacher doesn't come to class, the kids can't learn. If the teacher has a bad mood, the kids, he explains things worse, the kids won't learn. He's not in the mood, you miss a class, tomorrow he says, you know what, tough class. Imagine what happens today, you miss a class. And there's a way, like I know in this day and age, I mean, you know, we, we're not well every day. You know, you've got adolescent girls also who can't always focus every day. I mean, we understand the biology, I mean, we know that happens. So let them take days off. And then they have something to study back when they can. But, but, but in normal school scenarios, you take three days off, you are lost, you have to wait for the next chapter because you yeah, can't. it's crazy because we teach them about empathy from when they're three years old and four years old. We teach them about kindness, but we don't mirror that in, in how we educate them. The systems that are designed are not mirroring that at all. We expect them to be the same obedient, the same compliant, the same attentive, yeah, the compliance. same dedicated. Yeah. Conformity, compliance. Those are the words most prominent in school. That's what a good student, student is? Yes, what a good student is. Yeah. He conforms to the timing of the school, he complies with the teacher's section of solving questions. There is no, you can't get away with not complying. You have to comply. Otherwise, you throw out school, class, whatever you want to learn. But imagine how sad that is for a child who, who has been raised by parents who otherwise uh, encourage curiosity, they encourage questioning, they encourage empathy. It must be so confusing for a child in their psychology to see the same parents turn against them and say, why aren't you complying, right? Yeah, I think I, I think it's not just that I know kids that, but they also see the world changing ever more. Like the last three, four years, it's, forget COVID. I'm not even counting COVID as a reason to change. I'm talking about just exponential growth and change of yeah. things happening. You know, things like the metaverse, things that yeah. uh, were impossible to think about are happening yeah. today. Are literally happening. I mean, these kids like, what are we doing this for? Like, um, is this yeah. the most efficient way to learn something? No. Why am I doing this? Because I have to have travel all the way here. So I don't know. And I, am I sound like I all this complaining? I am. But the thing is, I'm in the system telling you the system is broke. But we've solved it as grown-ups in certain aspects. For example, all this rave about you know tech startups and yeah. investment coming into ideas and being user centric and getting data on users and figuring out what they like and then customizing and curating experiences for them these are the same kids who watch netflix they have spotify they understand that the world also can be curated. so they will they will approve the education industry the problem so far is they haven't got enough educators on board like I see startups, That's most true. of them for the last five years come to me and they say, oh, they, they are only, they only have the tech lens in them. So they, you know, so once or some soon enough, they will, it will be disrupted. Yeah. But the problem is also parents have to see it also. They have to see the proof of the pudding. The problem is this proof comes after a few years of exams. So it is, it is not the same as trying a new restaurant where you take a bite and you tell in the bite, do I want this or no? Mm. In a school system, the result is the exam. Mm. Until these online platforms can get the results, then, then parents will believe it. So it will take time. Mm. I understand that. But the beauty is, like parents will see the goodness or the benefit of this. Like COVID made people realize, okay, you know what? I, I remember hearing a lot of stories about parents not happy with the kind of teaching that's going on in a classroom. Because the first time they got to see it, it was the teaching didn't change. Just that it became transparent. So I'm saying this, 
that online education, or at least, I'm not saying a school should be run out of business. I'm saying is this is what the school should have done was become digital completely, become fully transparent, be more empathetic about the hidden cost of schooling, hidden cost of travel, and energy expenditure of the mind of the child also. Inefficient, and nobody even talks about the biology of a, child, of a teenager. The teenager's biology, no matter what we say, works differently. Sleep cycle works differently.